Hi, this is Rick from Green Our Planet. Today we're in one of the school fruit orchards and I want to talk to you about fruit tree printing. So pruning, when do you do it? Well, for most trees, um, and deciduous trees, trees that lose their leaves in the wintertime, you want to prune in the wintertime when they're asleep. The only trees that are not pruned when they're deciduous are citrus trees, and they're pruned in the spring or early summer after fruit is set. So the first steps of pruning a tree are identifying the tree. You wanna find out the age of the tree, the type of tree, and where the fruit is produced. That's going to guide your next pruning steps. Some trees are pruned to more of an open center. Some trees are pruned taller, like you'd see most landscape trees. And some trees are pruned open shape, kind of a bush shape. If you're gonna prune fruit trees, you're going to need the right equipment. And what I have here is a pair of loppers. This is for larger cuts pair of bypass pruners. This will be for most cuts, most smaller cuts on the tree. Pruning saw for larger cuts. Alcohol for sanitizing your tools, either in between each cut or definitely in between each tree. And of course, gloves. You can wear heavier gloves, leather gloves, if you're working around a lot of thorns. I like lighter gloves because they're not as heavy. The next fruit tree that we're gonna prune is an apple. Apples produce their fruit on long-lived spurs, which are developed through the life of the tree through proper pruning. Other trees that do this besides apples are fig trees and pears. The first type of cuts you should be making on your fruit trees are the large structural or thinning cuts. These cuts are made using your loppers or your pruning saws, and they help develop the structure of the tree and open up the tree for the smaller cuts, which should come after this. So this is an apple tree, and before we start pruning, you want to identify where the fruiting spurs are. Apples, remember, fruit on the wood from the life of the tree. So once you develop a spur, it's on the tree for life. So when you prune, a good handy guide is to take your index finger and your thumb and go from the lowest spur that you want to keep and go up six inches and six inches and make your cut. What that's going to do is the top six inches will turn into new leaves and branches and the lower six inches will develop more fruiting spurs. Remember, before you start pruning, you want sharp tools and you want sanitized tools. Now I've already sharpened these tools, I've already sprayed them with the alcohol to make sure that they're clean and we can start making our cuts. Now I've been asked to make this apple tree a little taller. They want more of a shade apple tree rather than a lower tree. So what we're going to do first of all is concentrate on our main cuts. Now since we have a few branches that aren't exactly growing the way we want, the crotch angle in this branch is too sharp and we have a few branches that are growing straight up, we want to remove all those first. So what I'm going to do with my bypass pruners is I'm going to cut any upward facing growth any odd branches that are growing at angles that are too close such as this one and this one and as far as cutting I do want to emphasize that there is a proper way to do cuts when I cut a branch, I cut it as close as I can to what they call a collar. 
The tree has special chemicals in this collar that help it heal. You don't want to leave a stub here and you don't want to leave a hole. So you want to cut as cleanly to the branch as possible while leaving that swollen collar. That's very important. So one of the cuts I'm going to make to this apple tree are removing a bigger branch. Now the reason I want to remove this branch is because it's growing at too close of an angle. The space between the branch and the tree makes this branch really unstable and what would happen later as the branch got older and was full of fruit, it would more than likely fail right here at the joint. So we're going to remove this branch with our loppers. Remember the loppers are for bigger cuts. What you want to do is position loppers around the tree ring. You want nice sharp tools for this and then, well, I didn't get in deep enough. And you want to make that cut as close to the tree ring as you can. Just cleaning up the edges a little bit. I don't want any rough edges. They invite insects and disease. This one's giving me a little bit of a problem. And you're gonna run into that. Not everything's gonna be perfect. The next cuts we'll be making will be the heading cuts. These cuts help lower the height of the tree and help spread the canopy. By making these cuts, we're cutting the top or terminal bud off the branches. And what this does is help stimulate the buds below that terminal bud to turn into either leaves or branches. The heading cuts are made to the terminal branches and it is to develop fruiting spurs and branches. And on Apple, you want to make those at 12 inch intervals. My pruning saw just happens to be 12 inches. So I can use my pruning saw to go up 12 inches, find the next nearest bud that I want to keep and make my cut. When you make this cut, you always make this at a 45 degree angle away from your bud that helps shed water or anything that might fall on this. And this will heal over rather quickly, but you want to be above the bud and at an angle away from the bud, always. This will initiate branch production up here and the first six inches below it will all be branches and leaves and more fruit buds will develop in the lower six inches. And you want to continue doing this as the branch grows. That increases your fruit production up the branch as you're training the tree to its final shape. So we're gonna do the same thing over on this branch. There's my 12 inch measurement. Always put your tools on a clean surface. Do not ever put them on the ground because if you put them on the ground, they have to be re-sanitized. I wanna find the bud on this branch, the outward facing bud, and that's the one I'm going to keep. And again, just simply, make that 45 degree cut directly above the bud. And we're done. This branch and this bunch are both done. These branches are too short to cut. So the next cut I'm going to make is my height cut. Now, I normally wouldn't do this on a tree that I want to make taller, but I have no fruit production here. And you shouldn't in a fruit orchard, you should not have big open spaces where you don't want fruit production. So I'm actually going to start over for this tree. So again, I take my pruning saw that happens to be 12 inches long. I'm running up from the lower branches that I'm going to keep. And I'm gonna add on just a couple more inches because these are the buds that I want to develop. Use my loppers 
And again, 45 degree cut. These are the hardest cuts for anyone to make. Nobody wants to cut half of their tree down. It absolutely has to be done for the health and the shape of your final tree. It's one of the hardest things that any orchardist has a problem with. We've done all of our final pruning. It's up to the tree now. Again, this tree is going to be modified into or cut into a modified central leader. That is a tree that has one main stalk, but at the top of the tree branches off into multiple branches. It's the standard shape for any tree as you're walking down the street. Most of your landscape trees have a central leader or modified central leader shape. Next year when this tree wakes up or next summer when this tree wakes up, all of these branches will make fruit spurs down on their lower half. They'll make branches on their upper halves. This tree will fill in. It should give us lots of nice sun protection. We are still going to paint it to protect against the sun and we're still going to spray the horticultural oil to protect against aphids and everything else. But basically this tree is done for the season. I made three cuts, maybe four, and I'm done. During the first year, 90% of the pruning should be done on the structure of the tree. 10% for fruit production. By the second or third year, pruning should be 50-50 fruit production and structure. So we're all done pruning, now what? Well, painting and pest prevention. Now, painting a tree sounds kind of crazy, but it's just like you putting on sun protection at the beach. Young trees don't have the canopy to protect against sunburn and we have to paint the bark of the trees any exposed wood with a 50 50 paint and water mixture each year after pruning after the paint is dried spray your trees in the winter time with a horticultural oil it helps suppress aphids and other insects that might be hiding underneath the bark and you'll have a healthier tree just by doing the simple steps we're going to be pruning this apple today. This apple has been um, pruned to a modified central leader. And what that means is it has a main trunk that travels up the center of the apple and terminates in several branches. A non-modified central leader would be something like a pine tree where that center stalk goes all the way to the top of the tree. On a modified central leader, like this apple has, that terminates, that top terminates into sep separate branches. And it's gonna stay like that for the life of the tree. So for this tree, we're gonna keep it in that configuration. We're gonna go in and we're gonna clean up some of these branches that are crowding each other. And we're gonna prune it for fruit and spur production which you can see on these lower branches here. Now, this tree is almost in dormancy. I can still see some green in here, but for the most part, you can shake it and the leaves are falling off. So this tree is safe to prune, but if your tree is not asleep, like winter dormancy, I would not attempt to prune some of the larger branches. You can do light pruning, but don't attempt to prune main branches if the tree's not dormant. All right, let's get started. So while a modified central leader is different from an open concept or an open boss, you still want the center to be clear. It'll allow that airflow, keeps down plant diseases, pests, allows predators to get in there and take care of a lot of the problems you may have. I'm not gonna do any big final pruning yet. I am just clearing out the insides from the bottom up, take your time. Walk around the tree, take a look at it. I walk around the tree several times. Sometimes I miss it the first time. You can see as you get more pruning done, as you open the tree up, you can see some branches that are growing too close together or maybe they're growing in the wrong direction. Don't be afraid to take your time.
People ask me, why are you taking down the inner branches if they're not crowding any of the other branches? And that's, that's a valid question. I know on a lot of the other trees, like the apricot, the branches aren't conflicting with one another. If they're not shading each other out, then you can keep them. Apple trees are a little bit different. They like to have a lot of room in between. You want to keep the center open for the airflow and for the sunlight because it's really important in ripening of the apples. So you want to keep that growth kind of outside, outside the center. And the central leader, even though it is a central leader, has actually been more trained to an open, open base shape. You can see that there is no main branch coming up anymore. It's all been pruned off to the side. So the center of this tree is already open and I'm just keeping it that way. I'm just going with what it's already trained to be. So we've got a lot of the lower branches and crossing branches out of the way. What I'm gonna start doing now is bringing the size of the apple down and start initiating the spur production lower on the branches. So what I want is I wanna find where the spur production is that I wanna keep on the branch. So let's see, for, for this branch, for instance, I have a couple of spurs that have already started and I have nice apple spur growth or fruit spur growth down here on the lower part of the branch. So I don't wanna interrupt that. So I'm gonna take these lower spears, I'm gonna take my thumb and my forefinger and I'm gonna figure out where 12 inches high is I'm gonna make a cut. I'm gonna do that on all the branches with an outward facing bud. What that's gonna do from the top of the leader, six inches down are where your branches and leaves are gonna grow. Six inches below that are where your fruit spears are gonna develop. We already have fruit spears down here so we're just going to continue that fruit spear development up the tree. Branches and leaves, fruit. And we're just gonna continue that as we move up. And we'll do that with every single one of these branches. Everywhere that I like the growth. This branch is a really nice development all the way down here, all the way up to here. May not even have to trim this one. We're gonna trim this way up there. So we have really nice apple spur development. And then you're just gonna go around the tree and you're gonna do this. And as you do it, you're gonna cut for space and prune for fruit production. This is a perfect branch to talk about developing more fruit spur development. I see lots of inactive spurs on this branch. And right now, we're probably not getting a whole lot of fruit production. So I'm gonna take this branch and I'm gonna develop it by going up from the base and doing my 12 inch measurement. And I'm gonna cut that branch right there at the outward facing bud. That's gonna initiate all these spurs to develop apples and branches or apple spurs and branches. And then we can just simply grow it to the rest of the tree. But that's how you develop the buds on your tree into fruit spurs. Just use that 12 inch measurement and go from the spur you want to keep up. If you're unsure about a cut, it's all right to leave it. This is a perfect example. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this or not, but I'm not gonna cut it right now. I can always come back and cut it if I change my mind. I have a really nice branch develop here, but I'm just afraid that it's too far out of the canopy. So for right now, I'm gonna keep this. If I keep it for a year, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's actually growing straight up from the base, which is usually a branch I would cut, but I like its placement. There's a branch here and a branch here, and I really like this branch right here. And I like this one, so I'm gonna keep them both. 
Don't be afraid of making decisions like that. You don't have to take something out if you're unsure about it. You can leave it for a year. You can come back to it. You can leave it for a couple of weeks. I've left branches like this and come back a couple of weeks later and decided that I wanted to take it out. Take your time. Make those decisions when you're comfortable making them. I'm where I want to be for today's pruning. I may come back and do a little bit of extra pruning in a couple of days, but right now I'm comfortable with the way it looks. It's not perfect. I can see a couple branches that need to be spread out, maybe some of this lower growth removed. But like I said, it doesn't all have to be on one, done on one pruning day. If you're for sure how you want it to look, by all means, go and prune it up. I like to have a few options. And when I come back to this a couple days later, a couple days from now with a fresh set of eyes, I may see something that I didn't see today But right now, I'm happy with it. Apple. Hi, this is Rick from Green Our Planet. Thanks for watching.